This short documentary by a San Fernando Valley High School student portrays the stark reality of growing up in his neighborhood north of Los Angeles. And this one right here, this is my house. About two years ago, there was a drive-by. I was playing out with my little brother, and they were shooting the bullets from this point out to the building over there. You can still see the bullet hole by the window. See if you could get a little bit of the tree. But these days, thanks to a unique video production class, the shooting at San Fernando High School involves video cameras. And when students hang on the street corner after school, they're often outside their teacher's house, tapping into his wireless web connection on their laptop. That's, that's cool. You actually get a signal. The program that has made a dramatic difference in the lives of hundreds of San Fernando High School students is housed in Room 307, the Computer Inspiration Studio. So I'm going to save it. Now let's just say I'm going to make some more pages here. I'm going to... Here, students can take fifth and sixth period classes in everything from website design to video editing. They also spend time here after school and on weekends working on digital projects for core classes like social studies and economics. We're going to have like extracurricular going up and it can be blurred. The program, which now includes some 100 members of the San Fernando Education Technology team, started in 1999 in a janitorial closet with three students, one laptop, and a social studies teacher named Marco Torres. We have a camera now that you guys can go out and shoot. If I look back at my own education, I remember the projects I made. I remember the hand I made in kindergarten you know, the little uh, the plaster. I remember the volcano I made in third grade. I remember the games I won as a baseball player because they were projects. They were things that had an end to them, something tangible, something that I can say to my mom, mira, mami, lo que hice, look, mom, look what I did. Oh, the main page, the main page like mm -hmm. colors. And, okay. and I know it's important. So when I do projects for kids, I try to give them something that has meaning. It's not just disconnected information. I mean, for me as a teacher, it's my moral obligation to make information real and connected. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm not teaching. What's our plan? Torres' students have already produced some 200 digital movies which stream over the website the technology team created. Team members also volunteer to teach other students, teachers, and community members in free Saturday morning computer classes. Mi Barrio producer Cesar Larios, who graduated last year, volunteers at the school, passing out to others the knowledge he gained here. We all have to work together in order to get ahead. So when I learn something, you know, it's my duty to go and help somebody else, you know, to learn it. And then that person will pass the knowledge to another person and will continue until everybody knows it. So that, that's, that's really critical, working together. You sleep forward. You sleep forward, right? Yeah, it's like... Ah! like yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Just, you'll have to sacrifice yourself for the team. All right. No All problem. Right. In addition to picking up technical skills, students learn lifelong skills in the collaborative process, oh, yeah. working okay, well, in small way. teams to help complete each other's video. Oh, that was better. I got to see your face there. <laughs> and obviously, in the future, when you get a job, you're going to have to learn to work with people. And this is a place where you can actually get to learn to work with people because you get in groups and you know that you have to push each other to get that done on time. I've been working on it all year long. Just from working on this project, I received a lot of leadership skills, being in charge of all the deadlines and making sure everybody did their work, like putting in committees and just telling them what parts to do of the movie. And also, just by working on this program, you learn mathematical skills. Like, you have to know like all the rotation of all the different axes, just in case you want to move the snowman 90 degrees. Since we all took parts in doing little things, I did a sled and carpet and stuff like that. And it actually takes pretty much a lot of time, but since there's a lot of us, it goes pretty quick. While the projects range from comical animated shorts to serious documentaries, they all conform to a set of production standards and assessment rubrics that Torres calls the four P's. The first P is planning, most critical part. In the planning, that's where kids write things like the script, a timeline, storyboards. Very, very important. I must be able, as a teacher, to sit down and visualize what it is that they're trying to do before I hand them a camera. Every time I shot, the shot that I wanted on my storyboard, I would cross it out and I had a storyboard, this was like 
like 20 pages long. <laughs> and then, you know, I'd go crossing out and you, we would see progress going on. The second P is production. That's when the kids go out and either shoot or start to collect the information needed to do the project. Okay, we can actually get a bar shot of it. That way we get the, the shadow and trees. we get the whole trees. And we get the the third part yeah. is a presentation. This is where they actually present the information. That was very important. Then the final P is assessment. I call it assessing with a silent P. And assessing with a silent P involves the kids to develop rubrics. What does it mean to have a good project? I think that's like the movie I'm most proud of because my first movie that I got to direct and film and edit and use a green screen in. So I, I, that's like my best movie, I think. What have I seen this before? Obviously I'm learning because I look back and like, oh, I could have, you know, used a different shot for that or um, I could have done this. But the best thing is, you know, go on and make another movie and then just, you know, make it better. Of the videos students have done to date, none has had a greater impact than the documentary Consuela Molina produced as a project for an economics class. She wanted to talk about some of the consequences of the world economy and the protests that were happening in Washington and Seattle around the World Trade Organization. So she decided to focus on sweatshops. She knew that if she had done this project traditionally in front of a class, the information would have died there in the class and she took this documentary and posted it on the web. And several people have found it. The Women's Human Rights Conference in Paris saw it and asked for permission to show it. And um, other places, like in India, there was a teacher who asked if he can show it at his national conference. It's a big issue, but yet at the same time, it's a high school project. So mm -hmm. I don't think, I wouldn't have thought that, you know, people from Australia or different people would have reacted to it the way they did. I guess as, as a little boys can make a big impact. This is that connection that I'm looking for. I see why it's this is that bridge, yeah. the digital okay. divide. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Click oh, okay. on that for me. This one? Yeah. And the more I can create opportunities for relevancy, the more connections are made, the brighter our hope light shines. For more information on what works in public education, go to edutopia.org.